I'm really enjoying myself this afternoon. And uh, let me say to you, you know, I came here. No, no, you have to oh. I came here uh, expecting to learn something. You know, learning never ends. So what I've come for, let me say this far, I'm so happy to have learned from everything that has taken place this morning. And uh, when Ms. Matarino asked me earlier on to come in, I declined. Not because I was afraid. Simply because I knew the presentations that came before were actually a platform for further sharing. You know, this topic, education for liberation, couldn't have been relevant to you if it, if it had come earlier. You know, you saw from the first presentation up to the last one, so many questions came up. And I said, that's the thing. And uh, for me, as an educationist, once an educationist, always an educationist. And uh, for me, uh, somehow, I wish to see more people. I know we are starting, but uh, as time goes, you know, it's part of education again. We will get to learn about this organization and what it can do for the common good. And uh, what right now, I'm looking at the young faces there. Those are the future, our future. And what I'm going to say here is simply to benefit our future. When, when uh, Mick <coughs> presented here, he said he was 85. I'm 65. And uh, the point is that what we have has to be shared with our upcoming generation if we are to have an assured future. You know, on uh, Wednesday, I was phoned by the Sunday Mail, uh, the reporter there, said, Dr. Uh, Kwaira, can you explain to us the meaning of uh, low pass rate for grade seven? And I said, do you want to know the meaning of the low pass rate for grade seven? And I said, have you also asked uh, to, to, to understand the, the attendance rate of the teachers? given the times we are living in. Have you also found out the support rate by the system? Without those you know, issues also coming up, it means we are not addressing the issue. So with education, ladies and gentlemen, let me say to you, uh, one thing for sure, thank you. Uh, when I heard about TED, I said, ah, what is it to do with me? What is TED? Then that part of it, I got educated. <coughs> to me, that was education for liberation. The speeches that have taken place before are amazing, really. All the presentations were so enriching. To me, that was education for liberation. This afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, let me say to you, uh, we can confuse so many things. But one thing to not do is to confuse education with schooling. Okay. <laughs> Let's not confuse education with the training. When you came here, did you register for, in a, for, for, for a class? <laughs> Out of this place, are going to have any positions? Say number one, number two, number three? That's education for liberation. Freedom. I'm a student of Paulo Freire. <laughs> and I'm also a student of R.S. Peters. The concept of education. If we don't, I said I'm 65. If we don't share it and I go tomorrow, how will our youth understand the concept of education? The missing link that we have as Zimbabwe in particular, and I want to say perhaps also even some other African countries as well, the missing link that we have, we don't, we are, we are not relating our schooling, our training to education appropriately. That's what we, that's what we missed. Uh, to, be edu to be educated, really, it's not as 
good as to be trained. It's not the same thing. To be educated is not the same thing as being trained. You can have a qualified driver, wonderful, a qualified teacher, a qualified lecturer, a qualified farmer, a qualified doc medical doctor, a qualified lawyer. It doesn't mean they're educated. This is why we always ask, if you go to a doctor, you get some help, you always ask, how much of the human being is in that doctor? Yes, he's educated, he has a degree, he has everything. This lecturer, Dr. Kwaira, he calls himself, he's educated, yes, sorry, he's trained as a lecturer. But how much of the human being is in him? How much of the human, once you talk about the human being in the businessman, the human being in the politician, wherever you might be, then you're talking about education for liberation. Ladies and gentlemen, if you look at, um, for me, when I heard about TED, I said, ah, TED, then I got, the, I got educated. TED means technology. Correct me if I'm wrong, those in the house. E means entertainment. Then D, design. Is that correct? Right. Then I said, ah, it's, it's relevant. Because my department at the University of Zimbabwe, my department at Design and Technology Education is really putting itself forward. And our main effort, I will not waste your time with many details, because much of the details, actually, if you look at the presentations earlier on, they are covering what I've said. I'm simply addressing those issues where there was some kind of confusion. So my department always works closely with communities. To, it's art, design, and technology, education. Then on the other side, we have TED, technology, entertainment, and design. What more can you expect of a relationship? It's a marriage. And I wish this association grows from strength to strength, not for individual purposes, but for the common good, for the progress of humanity, that is. And uh, let me tell you again, with education, when I said education is not to be confused with the training, education has no boundaries. Education has no boundaries. Education, you can't even grab it and say it's mine as an individual. If it was like that, I'm telling you, there are so many selfish individuals like me who would have grabbed it and said, I'll keep it in my suitcase. And even from the video, the leading video about Ted, that we have just seen there, it says, even those in prison, I don't know if you got it. Then I said, yes. Those in prison. I know in 1979, I was actually in prison myself. Uh, during the war, I refused to go for call-up, and I was imprisoned for refusing. You know, after all level, you're supposed to go for call-up. Then I refused. Then I was arrested. But then within that, I was still continuing with my education. Do you know how? The moment you think seriously about a problem, the moment you think seriously about your neighbor who is suffering, how can we help this neighbor? Then you are talking about education for liberation. All the training we might have, what are they for? All the training activities, all the schooling, what, what do we need it for? to solve problems. Not for numbers or opposition. Yesterday, my daughter, they closed school yesterday. My, I have two daughters in my old age, you know, blessed with two daughters. One in grade one, one in grade four. Yeah, you see? Refusing to expire. <laughs> and I have three grandchildren in England. My, my son, my first son went there, and my second son is also there. They got married, and they have three children there. And uh, let me say to you, I'm so happy to be here with you because these are the issues we're going to share. And I will not waste your time. I will go briefly, quickly, and everything. But well, some of the things have been said already. Those are the highlights. Now, with the design, essentially and conceptually, we have to describe. Once you come across a problem, 
describe it, a problem situation, identify, explain, and then solve the problems in any context in everyday life. That's what my department is about. And I could see that my department and TED, once they get related, I can see a dynamic force. A force where people freely share ideas. That freedom of sharing ideas, that's part and parcel of education for liberation. I have heard of people getting their degrees from prison. Whether you like it or not, the, the shackles are there, but you never stop thinking. That's education. And education, you can't own it. Neither can you pin it down. So our training, ladies and gentlemen, for Zimbabwe, our training, our schooling, to make it meaningful, definitely we need to think about how to put the flavor of education. Education is a flavor. You can't have a meal without some flavoring. And we've just had our meals there. You know, the best dishes. Somebody was complaining about uh, too much uh, pepper. For somebody, it's not a, it's a good. Huh? The same applies to schooling. The same applies to training. You, the way you design it yourself, that's what you get. You can design a schooling system to build lives. You can design a schooling system to destroy lives. You know, during the colonial era, some of us went through colonial era education. I was telling um, one of my co-presenters here, Mavengere, I'm happy to meet him here because his father was the headmaster of my school back in the 1970s. <laughs> and uh, I told him, for me to be here, it is because what of his father passed on to us as a student body. We're very small boys, you know, told, you know, you know, useless, but he could see value in all of us. And he placed value in everybody. This, no, no, no matter what families we're coming from. And uh, I want to say that's what education is about. Education that frees the mind. If you feel uncomfortable in, this, in any situation, you're not free. If you feel intimidated, you're not free. If you feel inferior in any situation, you're not free. You're a prisoner. You need education for liberation. And education for liberation, once you make it a flavor, you talk about progress. Right. right. I think I've said this one. Go ahead. Just because my, just don't, don't even hesitate when I'm running out of my time. Stop me anyway. Because I've, you know, at any point I'm saying everything. Okay. Right. Right. So really, my department and, you know, and Ted, I can see something dynamic. You know, in the future, let's keep on thinking about solutions to various problems. You know, we are talking about an, an, an untold future, an unknown future. Let me tell you, there are two things that happen. For some people, it's frightening. For some people, it's destabilizing. For some people, it's a threat because they don't know where to start. They become, they have number one from school, they have a very good degree, they have a certificate, everything, but they see it becoming useless. How do you come back into the track? Education for liberation. It makes your mind free and flexible. Listen, gentlemen. And uh, if you look at, uh, right, next slide. On the other hand, on the other hand, if you look at, uh, now, the questions that have been read here, uh, one of the issues there, how about an anticipated, how about anticipated problems? There are so many problems that are going to come. Unemployment, I've read about it here. Certificates becoming useless. Uh, empl losing employment. I think you've read about people committing suicide. Living, you know, good life, but saying, ah, I'm giving up. 
Now, with education for liberation, liberation, you must be liberated out of that kind of thinking. When there are problems, for some people, it becomes a challenge that is worth it. It becomes an opportunity for creativity. If you are orientated towards education for liberation, this is not about, you know, you can have a university, you can have a school, you can have everything. If there is no flavor where you, you balance your training, where you balance your schooling with, you know, how much of education is there? Remember, I said education can be harmful, education can be constructive. The same car that takes a patient to hospital to save life can be used to go and commit a crime. The same knife that can be used to prepare you know, vegetables for, a, for a, meal, a good dinner can be used to commit crime. So that, that's, what that's what schooling can do. Not education, schooling. Not, 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 train, not education, but a training. Wrong training can be very harmful. According to R.I.S. Peters, education for liberation mends up all that. What foundation, you know, if you are talking about education, acting as a foundation, in what sense? Right, another one. So it is exactly what we can now talk about. It becomes a foundation, it becomes the, the, the building block upon which you build your future as a country. You know, if you look at uh, children who are still growing, you must be able to see your future in there. Next, right. With education for liberation, you begin to talk about technology. You see all this. You know, this gadget I'm using, wonderful. I'm one of the, you know, the groups that grew up during the time of uh, overhead projectors, you know, with transparencies and everything. Now I'm so liberated because we have more advanced technology. Do you see? That's technology for liberation, innovation for liberation, art for liberation. There you can add even entertainment for liberation and uh, design for liberation. Next. All right. And uh, once we do that now, it means we can link our teaching and learning processes, which according to Robin Barrow, uh, back in the 80s, 85, Robin Barrow says, if you don't link your teaching to learning, if they are not properly linked, you have gaps. That's when you begin to talk about uh, the lower pass rate, this and that. And the problem with, uh, you know, competition, you say, I told you, my, one of my daughters was crying. She had become number 11. The other one was, the young one was two. Then I said, no, 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 don't worry. You have all done well. You have, you've both done well. She could not be stopped crying. Because, you know, you know why the problem? She wanted to be better than her sister. That is not healthy. Even when you talk about grading schools, say this school is better than this one, it means you are divisive. All your education systems must be coordinated and appreciate each other. Avoid competition. How can you build a nation when you're in competition? If you say Mozambique, Zimbabwe, Botswana, which one is better? Then you think, ah, Zimbabwe is, in, is superior to this and that. That's not it. If you go to our African Union, they talk about unity. Are we together? How do you unite if you don't collaborate? When you are collaborating, no one is inferior. Even in a classroom situation, our children must appreciate each other. If they think I am better than this one, it means you can't build a nation. Education for liberation tells us avoid unhealthy competition. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you still need me. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>